do that. It's all, there's already things out of the box for me. I don't have to necessarily build those because the tool is part of the um, the Microsoft Customer Insights Journeys ecosystem. So it brings those features a lot closer together. Um, and that actually comes to the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is your segments. OK, so you'll hear me constantly saying whatever you're doing in terms of data, whether it is you having clients fill out a form or um, having sent out an email or had a survey that's running, the system is mining it all and you can reuse it. And that's where Dynamics Marketing or Customer Insights is very strong, is the fact that it will continuously be updating your segments. So the way you can think about segments in uh, Dynamics Marketing is the fact that it's a list. So it's a marketing list that I'm putting together but it is just giving me a lot of additional functionality in terms of behavior, um, the, the information that I'm capturing on my contact lead and account forms, and also something that's very useful, any custom tables. And when I say that um, tables, it could be like, here you have a contact form, right? So I'm capturing all my contact information, like first name, last name on Yulandi, and I can view her as a contact. But you might also have something, you might have something that you create like a policy table and that holds all the different policy information because I could have many different policies. And the great thing is with the segment builder, I can then enable that policy table for segmentation. OK, so I'll show you what it looks like now. So if I say here, test segment one. Um, the other thing that is quite handy uh, that it it's it's it, again it improves the more you use it is I could tell the query assist so this is some of the the AI functionality I could tell it um, you know help me build a segment with active contacts so I could say um, I want all my active contacts that are under 32 something like that okay and then it's going to give me some suggestions like to get close to what I'm saying. If I don't choose one of these, it's going to try and still build it for me closest to what I can, what it can possibly get to me. But I could say like contacts who prefer Monday meetings, let's do that one. Okay. So it's trying to take, it's trying to speed up everything that marketeers are doing per day by using the query assist, which is Copilot. Um, and helping you by doing certain things for you. So here I'm getting preferred days Monday. I'm saying use that segment and it built that for me. And how it would know what the preferred meeting day is, you might be wondering, is because on every contact and lead record that I have, um, if I'm setting up a meeting or an appointment from Dynamics, it's capturing that, right? So it's on that timeline for that contact or lead. It sees, oh, well, actually, Yulandi always has meetings on Wednesday and she accepts it. She never accepts it on a Friday. So it's that's part of the real-time um, insights and journeys is that it's looking at every single behavior that I have within the system so that you can use it to segment and personalize. Okay. So... This is your segment builder, which is a fancy name for your marketing list builder. And anything that I have within the system, everything I have on my contact records, my lead records, as I said, any custom tables I can use within these queries that I'm building. I can also exclude if I want to. So I could say I want everybody whose preferred day is a Monday, um, but then actually I want to exclude a certain behavior from a contact like everybody who doesn't prefer sms communication because i'm actually sending an sms um, and you can then also combine different segments so if i a few weeks ago created a segment where i said um everybody that attended the annual conference maybe now i want to include that that segment with the segment that i'm building so that's where it becomes quite powerful because as you start using this tool for a while, you will have segments that might be four years old um, that have been mining constantly uh, and you will be able to reuse those and combine them. So you're just building stronger segments the whole time because it's constantly mining what those people are doing. Okay. Um, the other thing that you will have with this is you can estimate. So if I said um, I want, I'm going to, get rid of that one. I want everybody who's preferred meeting day is Monday. I don't think there's, there's nothing happening in the system, so we should not be able to really get a segment, but you can almost, you can always estimate to see how many members am I getting? Because most likely if you are pulling a segment, you'll have an idea in your mind of how many people it should be getting, right? And you can then 
view that. So you could view that to see what is the estimate that you're giving me? Does this feel accurate? Do I need to go and rebuild? And when you get a valid estimate, um, it will also give you a little sample. You can see here, view sample of included members so that I can then see, oh, okay, this is what that profile actually looks like that I'm trying to pull and market to. That's one thing that you have to target people. The other thing that you will have that is becoming more and more used these days is your compliance center, okay? So this sits on top of that compliance, which means if you do roll something out like Dynamics Marketing, um, you might already have that info for people. So you might already have a subscription or compliance center where you know these are the people who opted in. Um, we have a list of people who opted out and we keep updating it. Um, so when it comes to Dynamics Marketing, you can either use that list or link if it's a center that you have at the moment. You are not forced to use Microsoft's compliance center. However, you are forced to use a compliance center. So if you can see, here's a consent center here, um, and it does guide you. So that's something that usually is, it takes a bit of time in the beginning to set up, but you need to have, you need to give people the option to opt in to your communication if you wanna use the consent center. Um, and then you can go stricter. So I could either just have an opt in yes or no, which I usually, unless if you have very strict processes already, I recommend for people to kick off with is just have a simple yes or no. It does give you that form anyways, that yes, I want to opt in or not. You have that form, you can add it onto all your emails. Um, but then you can go stricter by saying, I want to start working with levels. So if my contact opted into my email, my phone, um, each kind of channel that I have, there will be a four, meaning I can always market to them. If there are two, which means they've only opted into email, they, you know, I have to restrict them for phone if a phone message is going out. So it does give you the flexibility to be really um, advanced and really drill down. But I always say, you know, you need to think about why you are doing that. Um, so if there's a good reason, it's great, can use it. If not, the normal opt-in form of yes, I consent or no, I want to opt out of all um, works just as well in the beginning until you can refine those. So that's available for you. And every email that I send out has to have a link to my compliance center to show that I am actually compliant. Um, a lot of this that I'm talking about when it comes to compliance and all of that, these are all available in my settings area. So it's available for you to play around with, but also whoever you whoever sets this up with you will take you through those. And there are certain tick boxes that we go through to say, yes, we've set all of this up so that you don't. I think one of the things you want to guard against is when you kick off with marketing, you don't want to constantly have something stop you. Like if you, you're ready to send out an email and it's telling you, oh, you didn't set up your compliance center the right way. It's not verified. You can't send the email or um, your address, your main address was not added to your consent center. So all of these things is just a little to-do list. And when you set up, when you get started with Dynamics Marketing, you tick through it and then you're free to use the features and, you know, it, you're free to play around and it's all working for you.